hear the Holy Spirit telling me today that this house must be a place where those who feel like they have forfeited it all and lost it all can come and recover it all. And to be a house of recovery, we can't be a house of shame. And we can't be a house of guilt. And this house is about to begin to live out something that was birthed in my spirit 10 years ago that I could not even understand. But you will begin to see before your very eyes a safe place. Where those who have lost it all can recover it all. So my friend, don't believe it another lie that says you don't belong. Mm -hmm. The gift and calling of God are without repentance and I declare over this life right now that every gift that has been put in Him will be resurrected by the power by the power of an awesome God. I declare it over Him. Come on, somebody, stretch your hand right. I declare it. Every lie that's been whispered in his ear, every lie that's been told, every lie that he's heard in the, in the times of loneliness, I declare that every lie is broken off his life right now. Every area where the enemy has tried to make him guilty and ashamed and unworthy, I break it off of him right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. can't I can't wait till we can get to a place where we can gather as a family of the refuge all together because you can't reduplicate this I, I, I'm not going to be able to reduplicate what's happening here in the 11 o'clock service and people that come to 11 need to experience and I'm not going to be able to reduplicate that and I'm not going to try but I'm telling you man there is there is a breaking anointing in this place today. Man. Man. I wouldn't Man, for those of you that are in here this morning, I wouldn't embarrass anybody to save my life. And so, if I've embarrassed someone today, I, man, please forgive me. I would not embarrass you. 
but I can't not say what the Lord wants me to say to you. being here today. Thank you. I love you, man. I love you, man. <clears throat> Amen. Woo! Thank you, Chaz, for not plowing forward. You're learning. You're growing. I don't, that's a, I'm not making fun. I'm, you're growing, man, and what God's doing in your life. Mm hmm. Whew. Man, I felt, I felt very strongly that the Lord gave me a word for today. And I, I mean, I still do. I'm going to, don't worry, I'm preaching. But to stand in here today and, and uh, experience what we've already experienced is just, I think, further confirmation of what the Lord wanted me to bring to you today. And you've been standing for a while, and I, you don't, I don't want you to, you don't have to stand. <clears throat> and Chaz had a bunch of announcements. We got a bunch of stuff going on here at the church. If you want to know what's going on, ask somebody. Stop by back there and all kind of stuff to sign up for and things you need to get involved in. We need help in a lot of areas. I'm not, I'm not trying to pass over. I know some of you have things you're wanting or need me to announce, but <clears throat> the Genesis, in the book of Genesis, and you don't have to turn there. I think they're going to put it up there on the screen. Genesis chapter 6 and verses 5 through 8. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth and it broke his heart. <laughs> and the Lord said, I'll wipe this human race that I've created from off the face of the earth. And I'll destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, even the birds in the sky. I'm sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. But Noah found favor. If you're reading from the old Bible, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter 7, verse number 12 says, The rain continued to fall for 40 days and for 40 nights. And I just want to talk to you for a few minutes today. I'll try to be fast. I just want to talk to you from this thought. Can you stand the rain? So back in 1988, it's a good year. My son was born in that year. It's a good year. In 1988, there was a music group making a name for itself. A smarter guy would have got with Leland and Freddie and had them play this today. Uh, or at least try. <clears throat> but there was a music group that was making a name for itself and... and uh, they had a hit song at that time, and it was a particular line in that song. 
from this group. I don't know how many of you know. I know we got a lot of righteous people in here, but I don't know how many of you ever heard the group New Edition. Yeah. And New Edition had a song by this title, Can You Stand the Rain? And the chorus of that song said sunny days everybody loves them but tell me baby can you stand the rain storms will come this we know for sure but tell me can you stand the rain and I know that the group that is singing this song new edition uh, Johnny Gill y'all don't know nothing about it <clears throat> but they're singing a love song. It's a love song. And, and, and I know that the question they're asking in the chorus there is being asked to a lover. But the premise of the question is where I want to go today because I think the same question about commitment is the one you and I need to answer for our spirit life and our faith walk. Are you in this thing when it's not easy to be in this thing? Everybody loves sunny days, but storms are coming, and storms don't change commitment. Storms reveal commitment. Come on, somebody. And when the commitment changes in the middle of a storm, there's a revelation that the commitment wasn't strong enough to weather the storm. So the singer here is asking his love interest if her commitment is strong enough to handle the storms that are sure to come as a part of relationship. And I think the question is one that the Father wants to ask you and wants to ask me this morning as it pertains to our spiritual relationship because oftentimes we're asking God for things, but if we've ever really paid attention to the character of God throughout His Word, many times God answers a question with a question. You with me today? When Abraham was asking God how in the world that a man his age was going to be able to produce seed, to be able to produce a child, God responded to Abraham by asking him, is there anything too hard for God? And, and when Job was questioning whether or not God was really as good as he'd always been taught to believe that he was because there were storms going on in Job's life, God simply responded to Job's questions by asking him this question. Where were you when I formed the earth? In the New Testament, a, a man with a son who had been affected by seizures and what we would call maybe epilepsy came and asked Jesus. He said, man, if you can heal my son, if you can heal my son. And Jesus responded by asking the, the father of the boy, if you can believe or will you believe? Do you believe? And then when people began to try and identify who Jesus was, Jesus asked his disciples, he said, but who do you say that I am? Because how many of you know and understand this morning that God wants you to develop to such a level in your walk and your experience with him that no matter what others are saying about who he is, your perspective and experience compels you to declare thou art the Christ. No matter what other people are saying and no matter what other people are doing, I, I, I believe this morning the reason many times that God responds to our questions with a question is because so many times when we ask God a question, we are asking God for blessing and God wants us to pause and reflect and discover whether or not we have the ha capacity to handle what it is we're asking Him for. Can you stand the rain? Man, early on or in my ministry, I followed Bishop T.D. Jakes a lot and listened to a lot of his preaching and bought a lot of his material when I was a younger preacher. And Bishop Jakes wrote a book 20-something years ago that I preached from quite often back in that day in my ministry. And the title of that book was, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? 
And the premise of that book is that you and I have to gain the awareness that asking is the easy part. But it takes courage to walk in what we've asked God for. It's not that God doesn't want to bless you, but can you stand to be blessed? It's not that it's not going to rain. The the scripture said it is going to rain. He causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Can you stand the rain? And, And to be fair and to be clear this morning in the scripture, rain can be seen as a burden and rain can be seen as a blessing. Or it can be seen as both. In the book of Kings, when Elijah prayed for rain, it was a blessing. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. He rained for, uh, prayed for rain. The rain came. It was a blessing to the nation. For Noah, the rain was a mixture of burden and blessing. But one thing that's consistent in studying the life of people, of the people of Israel in the Old Testament is the fact that the people of Israel in the Old Testament, they had a harder time managing blessing than they did managing failure and burden. You with me today? They they had an easier time managing burdens than they did managing the blessings of God. But as a New Covenant believer, I think that it's obvious throughout the New Testament that it's God's intention to bless us. But the only time that we ever seek Him, or if the only time, listen, I'm about to tell you something here. If the only time that we ever seek God, and the only time we ever see God, and the only time we ever experience God is in our moments of burden or in the failures of our life, then what we do is we obligate God to move us from failure to failure instead of victory to victory because if the only way you ever see him is when you fail then he's got to allow failure in your life for you to see him I I have a responsibility. Listen, I believe as a pastor in this covenant, I believe that a pastor of the New Testament, that I have a responsibility to not only teach you how to handle the storms of adversity that come into your life, but also how to handle it when it's raining blessing in your life. Can you stand the rain? Are you going to obligate God to move you from failure to failure, or will you let Him move you from victory to victory? On somebody. I, I don't have time to unpack everything that's in this story of Noah, the ark, and the flood. There, there's so much goodness and imagery in this particular story. Uh, if you were to really get into it, man, I could spend weeks there. But there's things in there like God told Noah to make the ark 300 cubits long. Why? Because 300 is the number in Scripture that's associated with supernatural victory over death. Trying to help somebody. Make it 300 cubits long because how many of you know the ark was a type of Jesus? Come on. And it's only through Jesus that we gain supernatural victory over death. Oh, death, where is your victory? Come on. Y'all not with me today. He told him to make it 300 cubits long. He told him to make it 50 cubits wide. How many of you understand that 50 is the number of Jubilee or 50 is the number of Pentecost? He told him to make it 30 30 cubits high. Why? Because 30 is the number of the blood. So in the ark you see that we have supernatural victory over death through the power of Pentecost and the power of the blood. Come on everybody. Woo! See, you have the the Old Testament. The ark is the Old Testament design of what New Testament salvation would be about. It was a vessel made out of wood because the New Testament salvation, uh, if you get into New Testament salvation, that would have to, you have to be about a tree. Come on, somebody. It was a vessel made out of wood because it had to involve a tree. It only had one door because Jesus would declare in the new covenant that I am the door. Hello, somebody. And if you try to come in any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. It had three levels in the ark. Did you know that? There were three levels in the ark. Because in Jesus, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. It only had one window in the ark. And the window was put in the upper deck. Because if you want to look out, you got to look up. Hey, hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying today? There's a lot of good stuff in the ark. And and so I don't have time to preach all that. So what we do have time to get to you today is we, we find Noah 
being given instruction to build an ark for the saving of his family. And how many of you understand this? The ark would have been for the saving of anybody else if they would have gotten in. It was for whosoever will. Same as Jesus. And uh, it, it, it was there to save them from the flood that was coming. So allow me just to kind of unwrap this thought for, for a few minutes this morning. A flood was coming, and a flood would no doubt destroy what was on the face of the earth. I'm about to set somebody free right here. About to set somebody free right here. I'm about to set somebody free right here. I'm about to set somebody free right here. A flood was going to come and destroy what was up on the face of the earth. So, I, I hate to keep picking on you, Freddie, but I just keep hearing the Lord say things to me. So, I'm just going to keep on saying it to you. So, this, I, this is in my notes. You can come look at this. So, it's not just for you. This is for a lot of people in here. But I think that some people need to understand a, a flood was going to come. It was going to destroy what was on the face of the earth. But how many of you understand this morning that in the divine order of things, sometimes renovation requires demolition? <laughs> And if you want God to raise up something new, you have to allow Him to destroy something old. Somebody say yes. And all of the destruction in your life is not orchestrated by the enemy. And while it's absolutely true that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, there are times that God comes not for the purpose of destruction, but for the purpose of renovation. And renovation requires demolition and removal of what was and what has been in order that you can see what shall be. So it could be that if God is at work in your life, the reason things may be falling apart is because He is in the process of raising something else up. <sighs> Selah. I'm going to let that marinate for a minute. Renovation requires demolition. And if you're more in love with what's being torn down than what God's trying to build up, come on, somebody. So God tells Noah, it's about to rain. Watch this. Noah had never seen it rain, heard it rain, smelled rain. But God said, no matter what you see, feel, think, or anything else, what you do not see will not change what I have said. But what I have said is about to change. What you see. What you don't see doesn't change what I've said. What I have said is about to change what you see. What you don't see will not change what I've said. But what I say is going to change what you see. Is anybody with me here today? There, listen, there are some of you, God has promised some things in your life, and you're looking around your life right now, and you're saying, I don't even understand how that, I don't even know what God is talking about. I've never seen it rain, smelled it rain. I've never heard about this kind of rain in my life. But God wanted me to tell somebody in here today, it doesn't matter whether you've ever seen it or not. His word is about to change what you see around you. His word is not going to change by what you see, but you will see a difference when his word comes to pass. Genesis 6 and 8 says that Noah found favor in the eyes of God. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. Now watch this. Watch, watch. Favor. Can't work for it. Can't earn it. It's just given to you. Right? The whole definition of favor. Y'all doing okay today? I'm, I'm almost done. The whole definition of of favor watch favor as as defined in the dictionary is something done or granted out of goodwill rather than from justice or for remuneration something done or granted out of goodwill rather than from justice it's also defined as excessive kindness or unfair partiality preferential treatment and here's where you you everybody in this house from, from this side to this side needs to get a revelation of this because if you do not understand favor you're going to have a hard time receiving rain 
Because what you're going to do is you're going to go around feeling guilty about receiving God's blessing because you don't think you deserve it. And you're going to look around and you're going to see people in your life who made some of the same decisions that you've made or made better decisions that you've made and their life hadn't turned out the way your life has. But God preserved you and God protected you and God covered you and God kept you. And it doesn't make sense because we were doing some of the same stupid stuff that our friends were doing who didn't make it out or who got caught up in it. And if you're not careful, you'll begin to look at all that and feel guilty that you got out and somebody else didn't. And if you live in the regret of that, that regret will keep you from enjoying God's goodness because guilt is not the proper response to favor the proper response to favor is gratitude and if God has done something for you it's not time to feel guilty it's time to feel blessed it doesn't mean that just because you're happy that it happened for you doesn't mean you Don't wish it wouldn't happen or would happen for others. But I don't understand favor. But I refuse to live in guilt because I have it. Come on, somebody. See, but the enemy will use guilt to rob you of the blessing of rain in your life. Why did I get a chance and they didn't? I'm gonna, and see, that's the enemy. Because the enemy will make you believe that if you can feel guilty enough. And that's not the response that God is looking for. When God shows you favor, He doesn't want you to feel guilty because you got it and they didn't. There's a lot of things I can't explain in this world. But if God is blessing me, then I'm, if, if the rain is coming into my life, then I refuse to stay in a mode of guilt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to receive this rain. Am I making any sense? So, watch. God tells Noah about the rain. And then he gives him a strategy. He didn't give Noah an ark. He gave him a plan. Some blessings require assembly. And there's a lot of people who cannot stand the rain because they're waiting for an ark while God has given them a plan. And if you're willing to build according to the plan that God gives you, then what you build will be something that saves you when it rains. But if you never start building on the plan that God has given you, when the rain comes, you're going to be swept up because God is not going to give you something completely put together. See, Noah had to follow the plan to the T because any deviation would cause the plan to fail because as the saying goes, the devil is in the details. And if the devil can get you to deviate in the area of details, then what you're building won't work the way it was designed to work. So people around churches, and especially ones like this, because we're honest, mostly. Sometimes too. T-O-O, too honest. I don't know how you do that, but sometimes it can happen around here. Hallelujah. But here's what happens. People, people, people say, well, Larry, I'm... Ch- Let me get over here and talk to these knuckleheads. People say stuff like, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. And Larry, this prayer thing isn't working. I'm praying, but this prayer thing isn't working. I'm getting up every morning and I'm praying. And and I'm praying over every meal that I have. And I'm I'm telling Jesus good night every night before I go to bed. But this prayer thing isn't working. Well, have you backed up and ever asked why? Maybe. Possibly, do you have some unforgiveness in your heart? Are you holding grudges against somebody? Is there unresolved offense in your life? Because according to Matthew 5, 22 through 24, it says, But I say if you're angry with someone, you're subject to judgment. 
That's why a lot of prayers ain't being answered in America right now because a lot of the people professing to be believers who are praying prayers are so angry at other people. And if you're angry with someone, if you call someone an idiot, you're in danger of being, being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you're in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you remember that someone has something against you, leave your gift right there and go and be reconciled to that person. Then come back and God will answer your prayer. Follow the blueprint. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that, you can, you can have what you ask for. But when you're praying, first forgive anyone that you're holding a grudge against, so that your heavenly Father will forgive your sins. Prayer isn't working, Larry. Come on. Are you following the blueprint? What's well, quiet in here today? Larry, I don't... That, that given thing that y'all do, it isn't working in my life either. Well, it could be about how you're sowing, not if you're sowing. Well, I'm giving. Yeah, but are you giving begrudgingly or with a cheerful heart? Come on, somebody. Maybe you're giving a donation instead of a seed. Because if you give a donation, you can get a tax credit. But if you give a seed, you can get a harvest. So how are you giving? We got awful deep in here quick, didn't it? Hello? Come on, somebody. Noah had to follow the plan to the detail. So Noah builds the ark. You okay? I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. Noah builds the ark. No rain falls until the ark is completed. Because how many of you know this? That God knows the appropriate time for rain. So the whole story, really, the whole story about Noah and his ark is really a story about the principles of preparation. Because if you believe that God is going to do what he's promised, then you have to build in preparation for what you believe is coming. You have to build before the rain because you cannot build in the rain. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, the ark was a structure, and you have to learn how to build structure in your life before blessing will come so that you're able to float and rise and not sink and drown when the rain comes. Look at your neighbor and tell them right now, you've got to get ready. Come on, you say it. You've got to get ready. If he's going to take, a pl take me to a place in my life that requires strength, then I have to put the work in to get strong. If he's going to take me to a place that requires more responsibility, I've got to stop being lazy and sloppy and unresponsive on the level where I'm living right now. If I want to become a leader in the house of God, then I have to stop allowing my desires and my preferences to come before his. And I have to stop using grace as a get-out-of-jail-free card and start using it as the empowerment for which it was given to me to allow my life to rest rise to a level where he can use me to lead people and my own life choices are not a stumbling block to those I'm desiring to lead. See, some of you won't rain in your life. But the reason it's not raining is because your ark's not finished. And you're preaching good, Larry. Thank you. When you finish the plan... According to the blueprint he's laid out, he'll send the rain. When you get a structure in your life that will help you float instead of sink, he'll send the rain. And if it's not raining, it must not be finished. And while some of you are in a bad mood and moping around, you ought to be building. A bad mood and a complaining spirit won't make it rain. Talent won't make it rain. Ain't nobody hearing me this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Talent won't make it rain. Come on, somebody. There's a lot of houses this morning that are filled with a lot of talent. There's a lot of churches overflowing with talent, but it's not raining. 
Why? Because talent won't bring the rain. What will bring the rain? A finished ark. What, the structure that will hold the rain. Can I just be, can, I, I'm going to deviate for just a minute. I want to be honest with you. Man, I'm, I've kind of been upset. In fact, I've been downright mad. Frustrated. We've seen tremendous, can I just say this? Is that Okay. I'm talking, because uh, i got to preach to me before I can preach to you. So much of what I'm preaching to you is because I've already preached it to me. But here's what I want you to understand. Uh, in, in eight years, we've seen tremendous, ten years, we've seen tremendous increase here at this church. God's blessed us in a lot of ways. I went and sat with a bunch of pastors over the last few weeks, and... We talked about hard things to talk about, about past, with pastors. We talked about budgets and we talked about structure at your church. And Rosanna and I sat and when we first started talking, we were intimidated. Because they started asking me about structure and I'm like... We have one. Come on. They started asking me about things... And they start getting down in the details of my life and they start asking me stuff like, what's your budget at your church? And I'm like, well, that's none of your business. And they're like, well, we're just trying to learn from one another. So I'm kind of embarrassed and I tell them what my budget is. How many people do you have at your church? Now I'm really embarrassed because we have this many people and this is our budget. And I'm thinking that it should be more. And I had a guy look at me and he, he shook his head and, and I told him I, what we're operating with. And, and, and I told him that in the last four years, we've, we've, we've had an increase in our rent four times, which has more than doubled what we were paying here, and that we have a piece of property that we're paying money on. And, 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 we, and, and I began to tell him on a monthly basis. I, I don't mind telling you guys. This is not any secret. But on a monthly basis, just, just facilities. like, And I'm not, I'm not talking about lights and all that other kind of stuff. I'm just talking about what it takes to pay the rent and to pay the mortgage on our property that we own. We're in a neighborhood of $4,500 a month just to operate that before anything else. So for all you people that think I'm getting rich. And, uh, and so this guy looks at me and he, he says, I have a church that's half your, or I have a church that's about the same size as yours, people-wise, but we have half the budget that you have. Revenue, half the revenue. Rosanna and I begin to look at each other and we begin to think about how blessed we are. God's blessed us. We begin to talk about that. And then I get mad because I'm, I'm, wanting to, I'm wanting to build and I'm wanting to do something because, not because I want to build, listen, if they'd let me put up a metal building, I'd put up a metal building just so we could have a place to all meet together. I'm, I'm not interested in the Taj Mahal. I just want a place where we can come together and that'll meet our needs and, that's, and where ministry can happen. And listen, if we're going to be a place where it's safe to re come and recover it all, that building's going to get the snot beat out of it. Because people that need to recover it all are messy. And, and so... So I'm, I'm talking, and I'm just, and I'm talking, and I, and I go to the bank, and I'm able to show the bank, I'm able to sit down, and I'm able to show the bank substantial increases every year. And the bank calls me back, and they said, "Well, it looks like you're, you know, you've you've shown steady increase, but your reserves aren't enough. So what does it need to be?" Tell me what it needs to be because I'm tired of y'all talking in code. Any bankers in here? They talk in code. And, and I, I, I don't understand code. I understand tongues, but I don't understand code. <laughs> and uh, sorry to all my Baptist friends. I just <laughs> Y'all didn't find that funny. Um. But, like, I'm, I'm just talking to them. And I'm like, what does it need to look like? And, and they start telling me what it needs to look like. And I'm, man. And finally, I had somebody honest enough to tell me that we need to see two years of this. 
And I'm just like. <laughs> Two more years? Two more years? You mean I got to meet in this joint for two more years? I got to deal with this for two more years? I'm getting all frustrated and getting all mad. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and said, Pouting and moping won't make it rain. But a finished ark. will make it rain. And I said, man, that takes work. That means I got to implement a new budget. That means I got to put a structure in place. That means I got to put a plan together. Come on, some of y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. But what God is trying to tell me that if he were to make it rain right now, I probably couldn't handle the rain that was coming. So what I need to do is get a structure in place that would be able to handle what it is that I'm asking him for. And if I'll do my part in building the ark, he'll do his part in sending the rain. But I can't keep asking for something I'm not willing to build. And while you're all clapping for me, it means the same for you and your life. Because you cannot experience God in a way that you're not willing to build for Him to come. The Word says the rain came and the rain produced the flood. The ark is, the ark is what, or it's for what the blessing produced. Rain produced a flood. The ark was for what the rain produced. Because how many of you know you don't need an ark every time it rains? But when it floods. <laughs> and so the ark was built to handle what the blessing produced. Rain is the blessing. Rain produces flood. And if you're not ready for the rain, you can drown in the flood produced by the blessing. I want the bank to loan me the money based on my status right now. But I talked to a gentleman this week who looked over all my stuff. This is what he told me, Mark. He said, and this is his business. He said, I can, I can biblically promise you that if you'll allow me to work with you, two years from now, you can walk into the bank with $600,000 in reserves. Hello? Right now, I'm wanting, I'm wanting to borrow a million dollars. But God said, if you build, you only have to borrow 400. Y'all not, not here. Ain't nobody hearing me. This ain't a building program message. I'm just telling you what. Telling you the struggles in my own life because some of you need to hear what I'm saying to you. There are some of you that have million dollar plans. But a million dollar rain would wreck your life. Come on. Come on, somebody. This is why you guys have had to hear this the last few weeks. And I apologize because I've been preaching through my own stuff on Mondays. But you, 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 you got a million, listen, you, you, you got million dollar dreams with a hundred dollar head. Hello? And if God were to, listen, you got a hundred dollar head and if you put a million in your hands, your head can't handle what he put in your hands. And there are some of you, listen, let's get away from money for a second. There's some of you asking God for some things. That's what I'm trying to tell my friend over here. I, I believe there, listen, I believe there's a million dollar anointing. Now see, I told him he's going to have to be mature because now he could get offended at me. What's he saying? I got a hundred dollar hands? 
not trying to be offensive. I'm just trying to, there's, but sometimes the things that we're asking God for at this moment in season, we're not ready to handle. But if I will build, so, come on, who's ever coming? I don't know, but I'm in trouble. Are y'all okay today? Can you stand the rain? Three things that you need to be able to stand the rain. First thing, Mark Mitchell, is you have to know the difference. Number one, if you're taking notes, this is it. Final three things, I'm done. Fast. Three things to be able to stand the rain. Number one, you've got to know the difference between comfortable and safe. Everything that's uncomfortable is not unsafe. The ark was not comfortable, but it was safe. Many times. Whew, you probably shouldn't get in my line of sight today, man. <laughs> Jesus. Watch. Watch, man. Jesus was stretched on the cross. Because how many of you know this purpose will stretch you? Yes. Come on, somebody. Some of you are being stretched right now. You guys over here are being asked to do things you never thought you had the power to do. You're being stretched. Ain't that right, Casanova? You good looking, man. I, I mean, you, you slicked up, man. I'm looking sharp today. Purpose will stretch you. Guilt will cause you not to be able to enjoy what God's doing in your life right now. You don't have time to be lost in the kid. Staying at a house with nine or ten other guys, that's uncomfortable. But it's safe. Safe. And if I can learn the difference between comfort and safety, It wasn't comfortable being in an ark for 40 days and 40 nights. But it was safe. Mm. Second thing you got to learn is you have to know how to survive in the atmosphere of the ark. Because how many of you know that atmosphere wasn't all that great? kind of reminds me of our recovery house you walk in there sometimes you're like whoo no I'm not I'm just kidding you're a great job just... Noah I'm just kidding totally kidding they keep it clean I'm just kidding but Noah on an ark with a bunch of animals and listen it wasn't even just about the animals Noah had to spend 40 days with his extended family All my family's coming this next weekend. Y'all pray for me. Love them all. But how many of you know 40 days and 40 nights? Woo! Come on. You got to know how to survive the atmosphere. You know what, Stanley? Sometimes you have to believe who people tell you they are. A lion's going to roar, a dog's going to bark. And sometimes you have to allow people to be who they are and believe who they are when they tell you who they are. And you've got to survive anyway. 
if you want it to rain. Come on. And number three, finally, you have to learn how. I don't have time. I spent too long. But the third thing that you need to know in order to stand the rain is you have to learn how not to get high off of your own supply. I think I hit a nail. Hallelujah. Because Noah came out of the ark and planted a vineyard and got drunk off his own crop. And the Bible said when he got drunk off his own crop, he committed lewd acts. Noah got lit. Hello? And when Noah got lit, Noah got lewd. And when Noah got lewd, he laid down naked in the tent. And he had a son named Ham. And Ham walked by. And I know what many of you have been told, but the truth of the matter is, the real sin of Ham it's not that he had relationships with his father. That's not really what happened. You study it out. What happened was Ham came by and saw his father in, lewd, in lewdness. And Ham went and began to tell other people. And so the very man by whose vision Ham's life was saved now became the subject of Ham's gossip. Y'all not hearing me. His son was saved by his vision, but he had no trouble exposing his father's sin. But Noah had two other sons. And his two other sons backed up to the tent. And they took a blanket and they walked backwards. And they covered their father's nakedness. And then they stood at the entrance of his tent until he sobered up so that nobody else would see his nakedness. And my prayer for every person in this room this morning is that God would send some people into your life who in the rough seasons of your life will back up to your tent. Man, I, I'm preaching today. I'm not talking about condoning your behavior, but I'm talking about backing up and covering your behavior until you're able to cover your life. Because love covers a multitude of sin. And while people will write a book on your failures, they'll only write a postcard on your successes. But allow me to say to all of you that you could put stop to that if you'd stop giving them stuff to write about. And getting high off your own produce. So I don't know where I'm going today. But there's some... Man, listen. Can you stand the rain? Can you stand the rain? Why don't you stand with me? I, I'm going to ask you something strange today. I'm going to ask you something strange. Every person that will, I want every person that will to gather in as close as you can. All the way across, gather in close.
felt the Holy Spirit in here today and I felt Him telling me here in worship that it's about to rain. And I feel like the message that I was supposed to bring to you today was just this, not, not a downer message, but a message to tell some of you that the reason it's not raining is it's not finished yet. But you're close to what God is wanting to see done in your life. And if you'll finish what he's given you a plan for, the rain is coming. So I want Eric, listen, I want Freddie to sing it, whoever's going to help him today, Chaz, I'm going to wear everybody and whoever. But here's what I want those of you that are crowded into this front to do right now. If you know, if you know, if you know that you need the rain in your life, I'm asking you to lift your hands across the front of this building as they sing, I believe he'll do it again. I want you to begin to ask God to reign in your life right now. Come on. To reign in your life right now. Come on. I see it do. Come on.
Hallelujah. Walking around these I thought they'd never come. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it 